<clears throat> hey guys, Al here, Vitalize Seed. Hope everybody's having a good day. <clears throat> uh, wanted to talk about, is it possible to have too much organic matter? <clears throat> wow. Organic matter is kind of thought of as the holy grail. Um, however, I often think sometimes it's it's um, oversimplified as there's this, this great, great thing. Um, so I wanted to use somewhat of an extreme example. Um, here in Ohio, we have muck soils, and I'll highlight some of those. This is a article from uh, Cornell uh, University, and it talks about these these muck, what, what I call muck soils. Um, uh, soil scientists, as you can see, they're calling histrol soils. Um, I might have mispronounced that, so I apologize. Um, but these can be soils of upwards to 20 to 50 percent organic matter. Um, but in most cases where these are found, uh, there are challenges. Um, as you can see here behind my shoulder, what are some of the challenges? Well, water management, um, and then also keeping the organic matter levels high. So naturally what happens in these areas, um, they tend to be obviously the word muck. Most people associate that with like previously swamp ground. Um, <clears throat> so in order to get something to grow there, you're gonna have to use uh, a tile um, and the water holding capacity can be so high in these soils um, <clears throat> that you're actually not able to grow anything without the um, addition of tile. Um, and then in order to get things to grow there, um, it makes it very challenging. So you actually have uh, declining organic matter levels, uh, which can be challenging. Here's just a quick example of <clears throat> some muck soils. Uh, I believe this is actually in Ohio, uh, kind of west central Ohio. Um, and this is just an example of kind of some of the crops that they're growing there, typically produce, vegetables, things of that nature. Um, you know, lettuces, tomatoes, things like that. Um, and as you can see, it's great dark, rich color, rich in organic matter. There is miles of tile uh, underneath these lines, uh, specifically if this is in Ohio, which I believe it is. Um, <clears throat> and Ohio State has a bunch of research papers on this uh, area uh, that was previously a swamp back many, many years ago. So obviously there's there's both benefits and um, negatives to having this much organic matter. The benefits is clearly going to be organic matter and, and free nutrients. Um, the negatives being, you know, just be based on the color alone um, and its ability to hold water, there's a lot of human... These soils would not be um, growable without human intervention. So um, you would not be able to grow them without a lot of tile being used and things like that. Um, obviously, another issue is that it heats up really, really rapidly. Um, so that can be good in, in some senses. Um, it's going to speed up microbial development up to a point. Once it gets too hot, though, you're going to actually see microbial uh, breakdown of that organic matter die off, which is often why we talk about organic matter is great, um, and so is thatch and, and all of those things, which is a type of organic matter, right? But it's only as good as our ability to make that available to the plants. So keep that in mind. And as you can see here, I mean, one of the issues that they're dealing with, again, this is from uh, the Ohio State University, specific to the um, muck areas in Ohio, the muck soils in Ohio, where they're growing a lot of uh, produce. And, you know, one of the things they're, they're questioning is, how in the world do we slow down the erosion of the, of the organic matter in these high muck soils? Um, so one of the issues that they're having, because there's so much um, the need for tile and things like that. You know, their, their question, can we use cover crop? What else can we use to slow down that erosion and keep the organic matter levels to where they are? So they've been really good. It's been like a mine for many years, uh, but there's concern that in 50 to 75 years, uh, there might not be much of that high, muck, high organic matter left. So why does all of this matter? Well, it all starts with the soil test, and this is where it's really hypercritical to understand, because we might look at the soil and we might go there and, Oh, goodness gracious, look how nice and dark this is. But we hadn't rained in a while. Oh, it's cold and moisture, and it's all great. But we take a soil test, we have a really high CEC, and we have 30% organic matter. And I have seen this before um, from people, if they're looking to start a brand new garden, they don't know the area that well, they just kind of pick a random spot or a food plot or a farm field. Now, a farm field might be a little bit different because likely we have the budget, depending on if it's leased ground or rented ground or owned ground, to run tile. Um, if it's leased or rented, you might go, wait a second, you know, I... I three quarters of that field or a quarter of that field, I'm not going to be able to really plant because it's it's just um, too high and we get a lot of rain during, you know, planting season or I'm going to have to change what I'm planting, right? Because I, depending on your, your weather patterns and whatnot, um, in other situations like a food plot or a garden, a um, little bit easier to, to possibly change those around and move those around and also most likely a more limited budget, uh, we're going to have to see, you know, are we going to run tile here? Mm, most likely in those situations, you're not going to do that. So then we have to come up with, is this the best spot to want to utilize growing uh, produce or uh, growing a wildlife food plot? That's where it all starts with that soil test, and it'll tell us a lot. 
the other takeaway from this is too much of a good thing isn't always a good thing. I have a good friend, Mitch. Uh, he's, he's a really good friend, Mitch Shirk, from uh, Pennsylvania Woodland Podcast. Uh, Mitch is an agronomist in the state of Pennsylvania, and he and I have had hours and hours of conversations. You know, and uh, we have to laugh about the situations where we've seen people get something for free, right? And uh, well, it must be good because I'm putting it down. It's free and it's organic, right? Whether it's eggshells or chicken manure or what have you. And uh, they put down so much of something that it literally changed their base saturations of the soil profile to where it would take very many years and a lot of um, changes in, in procedure uh, to alter what they had done. So before you go crazy and add a whole bunch of something, start with the soil test, guys. Evaluate it. And if you like this type of stuff, please follow us along. Uh, hit that share, subscribe button, and uh, check us out at vitalizeseed.com.